Welcome everyone to a video on the Together Inference API. Please excuse the mess. I am in the process of moving to a ranch to become a farmer at this point in my AI career. There are quite a few inference APIs popping up now, and for any given model, you might find that one API is cheaper than another, and as time goes on, the cheapest provider for some model might also change, and you can interchange cheap with who's the fastest and so on. For me personally, I've been following the team at Together for a while now, before I think they were really even a fully fledged like company. <laughs> uh, and they were just like a group of people trying to do like distributed compute. And I just really like what they're doing. They're also quite fast at adding new models and have a very large selection of text generation, chat, image, and code-specific models. It's also not just about who is the cheapest, it's about who is the fastest and most reliable. At least from my testing so far, I have found the Together API to be extremely fast and consistent. Lately, I would say it's faster and more reliable than the OpenAI API <laughs> or the web thing, you web UI. And of course, the question will be asked, you know, why API at all? Don't you have enough compute to do this yourself? Or why not use a cloud host or something like that? Because all of the models on Together's API are open source models. One of the main reasons that I even use the OpenAI API was it's just easy to like quickly try out ideas. All of the models, like I said, on Together API are open source models. It's conceivable maybe one day that won't necessarily always be the case, but right now it is. And you could download and run them yourself, but the Together API is just easier. It's convenient and likely faster than any API you're going to build for yourself, certainly myself. Um, but still, at any point, anything that you build on the Together API could be moved to your own hardware and kept private internally which is just nice to know and nice to build on top of. Okay, so let's check it out. To use the API, you're going to need to set up an account and billing. I believe they also give some credit, maybe $20 or something like this at sign up, but depending on when you see this, that might be different. Once you're all set up, you're going to need to grab a key, which you can find in your settings by clicking your account logo at, at least at the moment, the top right, going to your settings and the API keys will be there. You can feel free to just place your keys as plain text in your code, but I'm going to use a .env file so I don't share my key with the world. I'll also be using the Together Python package, which you can install with pip install together. I'm also going to be using some other things like .env, which you've got to pip install if you want to use it, uh, as well as Colorama, which again, pip install if you want to use it. To begin, we can do a basic API call and just make sure everything is working. We can check out how many models are currently available from the Together API. And that's actually three more new models that uh, I got just a few days ago as I was preparing this uh, and running this. So you can see that they are consistently adding more. And even now, that's a lot of models. The hottest, latest model I'd say right now is the new Mistral MOE called Mixtral, which is a 8 by 7 billion parameter mixture of experts model. We can check out the base model first. Now, what Together is doing is they're hosting the model and the inference to that model. But before you get too deep into anything, you're going to always want to acquaint yourself with the model's prompt structure or prompt format, which might vary between models. Alternatively, you can also just save yourself a lot of time in familiarizing yourself with the model and or even just writing the code to inference the API by just using the model in the together playground before you even bother writing a character of code. <laughs> So for example, we can head to the Together Playground and check out some of the models. We can then find Mixtral, click on it, and here you can see the path for that model. This is what you will call for in the API itself. And you can also see a link to the Hugging Face URL, and you can finally open that model in the playground. If anyone from Together is watching, I would love to see the model's like prompt structure on this little thing right here. Uh, because otherwise I have to go to the, t the Hugging Face link, look for either the prompt structure there or go to their blog, look for the prompt structure there. Like I keep having to like dig through and like find the prompt structure. It'd be wonderful as long as it's not just purely a text generation um, model. It'd be wonderful if it uh, just showed me what the prompt structure ought to be, you know. So uh, 
or or maybe some examples or something like that. Just something, that information, because everybody wants it. It'd be nice if we didn't have to go digging. But in this case, this is just a purely text generation model. So uh, we don't actually have any specific format here. Let's try by starting with some text to change the brakes on your car. You start by, let's say you are happy with these results and you do want this implemented via the API. Again, the model path is that Mistral AI slash Mistral 8x7b v0.1 and so on. Uh, so we can use this model with the together API like so. So that works. And just take note that you can also stream tokens instead of waiting for the entire response. This is useful if you want to do something like stream the response to a web browser or something like that. Streaming is just nice for instances where you have something like a sort of like a chatbot and the user is directing uh, directly interacting with the AI and where outputs might be somewhat long. And if you're gonna generate, let's say thousands of these tokens, it can take many seconds or even a minute or something like that. But the initial tokens will begin generating immediately. And there really isn't, at least right now, there's no model in the API like from together that I know of where any reasonable human could actually read faster than the rate at which tokens can be generated. So this just helps a ton with the user experience. If you're writing some sort of app that the you know direct output from the model will be read by that user. So it can just, it just keeps things kind of uh, seamless. Okay, so those are some pure text generation examples, but there are also chat or instruct models available, including for Mixtral. So let's check out the instruct model. Even chat and instruct models are actually just text generation models, but they're trained on a specific prompt structure to encourage that sort of structured chat behavior for convenience. So you query them via the API in actually the exact same way. I will also note that the together models can be queried via the OpenAI package as well. And this package abstracts away a little bit more of the details of text generation with these like chat or instruct models. So if you're after that sort of behavior or you've already got like some underlying software that was built on OpenAI, but you're just really hoping to get off, you can just swap out that, that like end URL essentially in that path and still use that package. I'll try to put a link in the description. If I forget and you're looking for it and you can't find it, uh, just leave a comment and I'll, I'll link to that. So for our very first instruct model, let's check out the smaller, faster, and super cheap at 0 0.0002, hopefully I got that right, per 1000 tokens model from together, which was fine tuned from the GPT-JT model, which is trained from the GPT-J model from a Luther AI. It's kind of crazy how even AI models themselves are now layering on top of each other and abstracting the models themselves. <laughs> so the model path for this model is together computer slash red pajama dash insight seven B instruct. This model is particularly interesting because I noticed that together actually has both an instruct and a chat variant for that red pajama model. The chat variant has a, de a defined prompt, a defined, a defined prompt structure of like human tag instruction, bot tag, and then like the answer. And that's the chat variant, but the instruct variant appears to me from what I can read and tell to be a model actually trained from just instructions in general, which you will generally show to the model in the form of a few shots or at least one shot examples. But the model can still also do zero shot pretty well. And what we mean by shots are really just examples. So zero shot might be Q colon, how many eggs are in a dozen? And then A colon. And the model can look at that just like you could look at that and realize like, oh, it's looking for an answer and just like understanding, uh, you know, get it. There's no historical example shown of the behavior that you're looking for really. But then if you wanted to show a one shot example, you might have a, you know, Q colon, how many days are in a week? You have a, an answer of seven. And then you'll ask your real question, how many eggs are in a dozen, okay? And in this case, you're waiting for that answer from the model, but it's a one shot example because you're actually showing it. Here's the kind of behavior we're after. So either way, the model should definitely be able to understand and follow this pattern. Obviously, this is a very simple prompt structure. Most instruct models could do this with what we would call zero shot. But 
My understanding is that the Together Computer Red Pajama Inside 7B Instruct, in particular, is trained to just generally work on instruction-based prompt structures and work with many formats. Whereas generally, from what I have personally seen, people interchangeably use the term instruct and chat to be actually the exact same format, the exact same prompt structure. Most models do not have a chat and an instruct variant. They are the same thing and used interchangeably. All of that said, once you begin to work with a format like this, like an instruct or chat format, it can be a little more challenging to like program and build that prompt, but honestly, it's not that hard. So let's see how this might work. As you can see, it does answer correctly, but then goes off on something else and then begins to continue following its own pattern there. And that's kind of weird. For this, we can actually make use of the stop sequences. In our case, we're actually confident that the new line or a new line is the end of the response. So we can actually do something like this. And then finally, you could continue to build on this prompting and account for a history of back and forth like this. Now, we've only shown two models out of 120, but hopefully you can already see some of the power and speed of this together API. It's definitely uh, faster than any anything I could run even locally. But again, they're all open source models. And at any point, if you wanted the, the privacy or you were concerned for whatever reason, uh, or you need to satisfy like HIPAA for, you know, healthcare providers, and at least in the United States, stuff like that, you can kind of develop out on the API and then eventually come down local um, as needed. Another impressive model that I've found on the Together API is the uh, Find Code Llama 34B Python and in this case, V1. This is a 34 billion parameter model trained on Python code. I've found it to be quite fast, quite accurate, very comparable to what I might get out of like GPT-4. Um, the more popular 34B code model tends to be the Wizard LM or Wizard Coder Python V, in this case, 1.0, if we're looking at the Together API, which um, is, again, like I just said, it's available on that Together API. Both of these models also have V2s now, and they've shown considerable improvement. So hint, hint, at Together, if yet again you are watching, uh, add those uh, V2s. Uh, but this was also uh, just plain my first test with that find model. The thing is, each model, just to like basically test it, takes you... I don't know, at least 15 minutes to download for, I would say, most models. You need to create some sort of rudimentary local API unless you want to rerun it every time your script breaks or something like that. So you really want something like hosting the model that you can query even, even if you're just doing it locally. That's generally the best way to go about it. And for me personally, I know I'm not the best and I haven't made this process like perfectly fast for every single new model, but to test and try any new model, it tends to take about an hour per model just to set everything up, get everything going, and then start playing with that model. It's too much time such that I'm really just not willing to test that many new models out. But on Together or any other decent API, you can just instantly test that model either via the API or even just before that point even just on the playground, just like boom, instantly try it out, see how it feels and then try it on the API. And then if you just really love it and for some reason you still want to run things locally, okay, now go to Hugging Face, now download that model. But even this like these, these, the, these 34 billion parameter models for coding, these are 60 to 70 plus gigabytes in size and pretty slow to run locally. I can test new models on together in seconds and that's just plain awesome. So at least for me, what did I want to do with that find model? I've really long been trying to find an open source replacement for chat GPT for the term GPT project. The find 34B model has the Llama 2 license, which basically means it's open source unless you're a fang company. <laughs> and that's awesome. Uh, this is the basic implementation that I made with term GPT, but with finds code Llama model. I tried to simplify it as much as possible. There's still quite a few lines here, but the, the the end application, the implementation is actually quite simple. And I didn't really want to go through this like super line by line. Uh, if you have any questions or if, if I've glossed over something, uh, please feel free to leave a comment. I, I'll do my best to answer any questions, but I think it's pretty straightforward. So the prompt structure of the find model is the following. So you'll start off with this like pound, pound, pound system prompt, and then the actual system prompt, whatever. 
hey, it's me from the future. And actually, it turns out that I was mistaken on that prompt formatting. The prompt formatting should literally be just for the find model. An instruction followed by a new line. But even the docs themselves are kind of confusing on Hugging Face because it says, in one case, it says, uh, add a new line colon. And then the example is colon and then space and then new line. And in fact, all of these things really do matter. Like a space is a token, right? So um, <laughs> anyways, uh, <laughs> and nothing is uh, to be trusted, I suppose, anymore. But I will say it's probably something more like write the instruction, colon, new line, and that's the proper way to do it. I actually have no idea how I got confused on this prompt format. But actually, that just further makes my case like I said before, I really wish uh, Together would just have the prompt format for any of these chat or instruct style models. I think that would that would help. That would have saved me some uh, trouble. But also, interestingly enough, using this format that I'm about to show, uh, you can totally have great results. <laughs> so I don't, I, I don't, this, is, this is why I'm becoming a farmer. Also, I did happen to catch that there is a find code llama v2, which v1 was trained, from my understanding, primarily on Python, and v2 is trained with Python, C++, and a whole bunch of other things. And again, for this video, we're using v1, but the next, the very next step is probably use the v2 version because my guess is that is going to be far better for you know the project of term GPT uh, than. V1. I don't actually know when Together added that. Maybe it's totally possible, almost certain. I missed it, but maybe that like just got added or something. I don't know. From here, we can use the system prompt to set up the context for the conversation. And then I also just go ahead and show one example of how I would like the assistant to interact with user input. So in this case, it's a one-shot example. So we can use both a system prompt and a one-shot example of the behavior that we're after to really kind of give the model the impression of what we actually want. And then finally, we give one final nudge uh, to the model that we want just bash commands. That's the whole point of term GPT is it basically structures everything from question to literal terminal outputs that could be run if you so choose to do literally everything. So you don't have to code anything. You don't have to copy and paste anything. It just simply, you say what you want, the model produces the results, and then actually runs them via an os.system call. So once we're done building that, that exact prompt um, that we're gonna send into the model, we actually go ahead and, because again, all of these models are just simply text generation models. It's just some of them are trained on either instruction types of formats, and then others are trained on a very specific prompt format, but you don't have to, uh, like you can inject whatever whatever history you wanna make up in your mind, <laughs> um, and you don't actually, like the model is just gonna continue generating information. So you could even find, and you will find this to happen to you, that the model, if left to its own desires, uh, it will actually continue generating even more future user inputs for that matter. So, so you have to handle for these things. So at least in our case, what I'm going to do is after I get to that assistant answer, I'm actually going to start off the assistant answer with that like that uh, the the beginnings of a bash command, <laughs> uh, just to really drive home, hey, you're you're producing bash commands here. So then using string formatting, we can just ask the user what do they actually want, and then the model should be responding with a series of those bash commands. We can then use a regular expression to pull a list of bash commands from that, and then use os.system to execute those commands. Running this, we get a live visualized game of life in Python, which is pretty cool to see. And I actually think this is a fantastic start to doing this entire thing with potentially the find model. But also, it doesn't have to be just one model. You can use other models to do all kinds of things. Like you might come in with another model, maybe one of those Mistral models to evaluate the output of the find model and say, hey, does this appear to look like uh, output that matches what the user was looking for. For example, uh, you could even use another coding model and then maybe have two coding model responses and then have another model that moderates and chooses which one was best. Stuff like that. You could do all kinds of combinations here. Since I already showed the base Mixtral model, I feel like I'd be doing a serious disservice if I didn't show also the Mixtral 8x7b instruct variant, which, uh, like I said before, uh, most of the time you're going to see just total um, 
interchangeability between instruct and chat. And I would say that is the case here. This has one very, very specific prompt structure format that it was trained on. That said, just because the model was only trained on that format does not mean it can't handle some other custom format. You can almost certainly get away with any format you want here to at least some extent, but it's best if you could structure what you're trying to get done to this exact format. Now, why might you want to use the instruct variant over that base model? Because they're both mixed role eight by seven B models. So what the heck, why would I do this? The reason is the performance is just simply better for most of the time. If you're trying to use a model with like user input, get some output, the instruct models just tend to perform much better. It's just already on track to behaving in the way that you're actually trying to get most of the time these models to behave. The only real difference here is you need to do prompt formatting to format your inputs um, and outputs for further inputs uh, to that specific prompt structure. And the main difference here is this model is trained to follow that very specific prompt structure, which is this like sort of open string tag and then followed by these instruction tags with the instruction in the middle. And then after those instruction tags, you've got the model answer and then a closing string tag. And then you can also continue the context uh, by adding more instruction, more string and tags. To my knowledge, the, either there's a typo <laughs> or you only have one string open tag, but you have as many string closing tags as there are prompts. Now. Uh, if anybody has the authoritative answer to this, I've tried looking around. This appears to be the same format structure of like the llama models and all that. They all seem to say this is the structure. You don't have an open string, closed string for every instruct answer pair. Uh, but if I'm wrong and, and somebody has true definitive from the source proof of that, please let me know because this feels very wrong to me to just have the opening string and then all the closing string tags. That's just... It just doesn't feel right, <laughs> but, but I believe this is the correct way. This this way at least does work, but I just, it feels weird and I feel like it's got to be wrong. So someone please prove me wrong or prove me right. I just, uh, I don't know. I still, I don't have the for sure answer on this yet. So what I really wanted to do is rather than just show a single input and a single response, which would be very simple, what I've done is added a simple way to track the conversation history, a helper function to help build that history of like pairs of input response. And then finally, a function to build the actual prompt that we will send to the API and to that model. If there is a history, this function will construct that full history. And then otherwise it just adds the latest input from the user for the overall prompt uh, to, to the model via the API. Then we just have a while true loop to continue doing this to the user's heart's content. I also went ahead and increased the maximum tokens since this model can actually go out to a context of 32,000 tokens. So at some point to continue context, you would want to probably have some sort of summarization function. Again, you could use Mixtral to literally summarize the entire context history um, and, and do this once tokens get longer than some number, let's say 20,000. So anytime you have your total tokens that's longer than 20,000, go ahead and do a summarization and then continue. But anyway, this is a good start. The rest of those parameters like uh, in the function like top K, temperature, top P, so on, these are knobs that you can kind of tweak to adjust the statistical behavior of the model's token generation. But I, I just have been using the settings that are just default from together in that playground, <laughs> which I think is a pretty good start so far. Uh, but also feel free to tinker with those uh, depending on what you're after. So you can get a lot of times it can be like a creativity knob uh, or thought of in, in that way, um, but every model is going to be a little different, so uh, you'll have to play with that on your own. And again, if you really like this model and for whatever reason, you will, now you want to run it locally, guess what? That model is available on Hugging Face. You can download that model, run it locally, all you want. And all the code that you wrote to work with that, build the prompt for that model, everything is literally the same. You would just simply write your own local API and then you'd query that API the same way you've been querying the Together API. So it's just an incredible resource. Um, so yeah, that's the Together API, uh, some basics of using it and why you might use it. And finally, 
believe it or not, there's a book you might have heard of once or twice on my channel that you might be interested in if you're looking to learn more about neural networks and how they work. It's called Neural Networks from Scratch from myself and Daniel Kukiewa. It teaches everything from a basic forward pass to training and optimizing your model and running your trained models all from scratch in Python, including all of the math involved and only assumes that you know basic Python and basic algebra. You can learn more and get yourself a copy at nnfs.io. Otherwise, I will see you all in another video.